this time on KEI Fabrication. Folks, so let me explain. All right, we're about to take our life in our hands. Hurry up, we're gonna go on the Getting ready to go on another little reconnaissance mission. Nice. Hey, folks, my name is Mike. This is KEI Fabrication, and welcome to my shop. And this is my most recent project, and this is my shop truck, my daily driver, my race truck, my garbage truck and my all-around performance vehicle. If you want to follow along with the channel, you can see the progress of the build on this truck and all the modifications that have been made. So this truck has already been to car shows, it's been road racing, it's been drag racing, and it's been circle track racing. We've got a bunch more new projects in the queue. We're looking forward to meeting more of you. And for those of you who've been with the channel for a while, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your comments and the interaction and encouragement. I hopefully through this project we've gained some credibility with you folks and let's see what's coming up next. Alright folks what I got going on over there is uh, I tack welded that piece of steel to the roof. The roof is collapsed on top of itself. Um, the ridge just above the window opening is supposed to be there. The other crease is going in towards the inside of the car that's not supposed to be there so I'm going to try and pull it back out and get the roof into shape so uh, I got the overhead hoist putting some tension on the metal and then I'm going to go at it with the um, um, matchstick over here so uh, see if I can get you in a good position to watch me potentially fail so uh, anyway we'll see what happens All right, so most of that crease came out. Um, this is the factory edge right here, this sharp edge here. And I'll show you what that's supposed to look like. So this, this roof is actually supposed to roll out and this is supposed to protrude out past the body. 
So I made a little dolly here and I'll hammer on the back side and we'll see how far I get. But uh, this is that, the roof is supposed to come, come down and then roll out to that sharp edge. So that's long since been gone. Um, the damage that I'm trying to correct is the damage that was done when it landed on the fence. Uh, it kind of went end over end and it landed hard. Um, you'll see the pictures of, of what this side looked like. And uh, by the way, one of the pictures I have has Roger spelt right here, Roger. And uh, it's still there. All right, folks, we're back at it. I'll show you what I did in a minute. I only got a couple hours today. I came up to the shop and turned the heat on a couple hours ago because we have this going on. And uh, we got about four inches so far and the weatherman is predicting six to 16. So uh, it's anybody's guess. So let me show you what I'm, I've accomplished uh, yesterday late in the day. I did a little uh, work without the camera on and some of it was because I ran into a, a struggle. So uh, what I did is I added a one inch, well it's not exactly one inch, it's more like three quarters of an inch. I, I traced this out onto a piece of steel and I put it in there to give this some rigidity all the way down the door. So this side is in the shape that it needs to be and this curvature is back where it should be. 
the trouble I'm having is this piece of half inch square stock is kind of the reference line for that 37 Chevy double bead that goes from the cowl to the rear quarter. I've got a jack under it trying to favor it, so what's happening is this has got a curve to it. So uh, the body is free at the back and the cowl is nailed down, but I think the roof is so far out of shape that it's actually preventing this from relaxing to the point where this is horizontal. I've even got a little tension going on back here uh, with a strap, trying to pull that into shape. Um, so what I'm going to do is fashion up some sort of device that I can push on the center of the roof because there's a huge dent in it. I probably showed that to you a bunch of times. Um, just one more step to get some of the body back in shape. Again, because it's so bent up, it's been so twisted, and it was out of shape long before the last time it was raced due to the big wreck. So, and I have no references. So the frame definitely helped me get there. Uh, I'm not really ready to nail the cowl to the center of the jig that I've made uh, and I freed up the back of it from the center of the rear of the chassis just because I want to make sure I'm not limiting this section from moving around so um, let me see what I can do about that so I got a cross member going from the frame rail to frame rail and then I've got a bumper jack with a piece of tubing pushing on probably can't see it but there's a 4x4 block and there is a ton of tension on this roof I don't know if it's uh, maybe just the weight of the body that's causing some of that issue but um, I'm gonna gently push up on it and see how it reacts we'll see see how it goes How's it looking? Any better? All right. 
right, so from the trim line down, the body is better. Uh, I nailed it in position. I've got a bracket inside the frame attaching it here. And just to try to stabilize more locations, I've got a stinger going from the top of the frame to the bottom of that rear cowl. Same thing with this side, those are exactly the same length. I've got it clamped in the center line. So that's looking good. And I started pushing the cowl out. Um, I'm going to get back far enough so you can see it. So you can see where the firewall is inboard um, of the frame. So that whole cowl was pushed inboard uh, the width of the frame and then some. So what I did was um, I put some fairly heavy gauge like uh, 18 gauge steel uh, and replaced the lower half of that cowl. I put the flange on it that the, fire, the uh, firewall would attach to. Um, the, the car had been wrecked and rehabbed and whatever many 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 times so that whole corner was uh, actually shortened up almost an inch so that's back to where it needs to be and that's helpful getting this front cowl in position it is level from the dashboard down to the frame on both sides I did go ahead and tack the center of the um, upper cowl and uh, got some of that dent out and uh, now that I've got this stabilized in a bunch of different locations I can start working on from here back get that rear quarter panel into shape and uh, push the door out those sorts of things that's helping getting the windshield back into shape once I pull the dent out hopefully this will lay back where it's supposed to and the windshield frame will be straight and there's a whole bunch of uh, dents that have to be taken out up here to get this upper windshield frame correct. As you can see, there was dents on top of dents. So uh, they put body filler in and then they dented it again. So the curvature of this roof looks realistic from where the rain gutter used to be up to the center of the roof. However, as I mentioned before, this side is raised up way more than it needs to be. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on. This part here is okay, but as soon as you start going forward, it really jumps up what I consider too high. So I'm going to put a brace from, from here down to the frame, a good rigid one, now that this is all strengthened up. And I'm actually going to tack something to the roof and try to pull just the roof skin over a little bit. And um, once that's done, then I can start strengthening up this rain gutter rail and reshape this curvature that's supposed to be in here. All right, I'm pushing my uh, time limit here big time. I got to go plow snow. We probably got another six inches since I came in. I got to do it once now, and then hopefully in the morning I won't need a bulldozer or a, a loader to get rid of the snow. All right, doesn't look like I did much, but we'll see. Oh man, winter in New England. Here we go. Well, folks, we didn't have too much time to play with this thing today, but I did manage to get the A-post on the driver's side in shape, the cowl curvature done, and not using this door. Uh, however, um, I did push it out to get the body line nice and straight, and it's coming out good, and I reinforced the uh, quarter window the B post 
because that was just paper thin and I think I got the curvature of the body to match what's going on on the other side got the body level from left to right and we're just kind of pulling it back into shape and the next thing I'm going to do is make a template for the passenger side windshield frame and kind of get some strength back in the roof up here so uh, we're getting there we'll see uh, see how the thing shapes out the body doesn't look too bad as far as front to back uh, compared to what it was so uh, obviously the other side hasn't changed much uh, because that was kind of my template um, and there's not much light over there and there's no paint over there so it doesn't look anywhere near as uh, good on the opposite side as it does here but anyway uh, I got a piece of half by half going across to hold the cowl at the correct width at the top I got brackets supporting the replacement uh, portion of the cowl and I've got a little bracket to hold the quarter panel in position this crossbar is tacked in place so I can start getting that shape of that lower quarter panel in uh, in shape kind of like I did over here so I have to make a template of the curvature here and cut out a piece of flat stock that has the right shape to it tack it along where the original door frame uh, used to connect and that'll be my foundation to put something on there another strip of metal to replace that door skin all right we got uh, six inches of snow outside I gotta go start plowing the neighbors are calling saying where are you so uh, all right I gotta leave this thing as much as I have fun working on it I gotta go do some other things okay, so the curvature of the body here is where it was as near as I can tell from the photographs that I have so I used it as a template and I did some cardboard aided design and made a template and I traced it out on a piece of flat stock and I made these pieces that are going to replace the flange that the door was originally welded to and uh, the ones that are in here right now are temporary and I'm going to uh, cut those away now that I know that the body is where it belongs but these will replace the flange that originally was here uh, that the the door channel was on so I did that side already and uh, it's all tacked in place so that curvature is good and uh, I matched it up to the driver's side, matched the driver's side one up to the passenger side so I can cut away the temporary supports that I made here and replace it with this. So um, the driver's side looks a lot better. It's got some structural integrity now and it's got a place for me to build off of uh, to attach the door. And when I my plan is again to replace this sheet metal from this trim line down. Funny thing is, is uh, all of this stuff along the door bottoms. I have some of the old photographs, and I look at it with a magnifying glass. And this this was rusty when they made a race car out of it. So uh, it's it's just kind of cool that uh, you know. When this car was made, they were doing everything they needed to to make this thing a race car, and they went to the junkyard and found a body. And uh, 
and went racing. So uh, the driver's side is looking much better now. The bottom of the door is left loose because the welds broke 30, 40 years ago and it's just kind of flopping in the breeze. I did kind of beat it around. I don't know if you uh, can see this or not, but there's some uh, wrinkles in the sheet metal just underneath the old number seven. Um, I'll try to find the photograph that I have and that those dimples in the sheet metal and the tears uh, are actually in the photograph uh, and it's identifiable because they run right at the base of the painted number seven so I'll throw that photograph up and uh, show it to you all right uh, I'm gonna call it a day um, I may before I head out try and trace out the windshield frame I've got the cardboard I'm gonna put up behind it I got some magnets here to hold the cardboard against it and trace it out and the purpose is to uh, if you use computer-aided design um, AutoCAD SolidWorks uh, inventor or whatever you, you do the mirror command and uh, you mirror it about the center line of the windshield frame so that's the plan and um, Hopefully I can use the base of this as a reference and then the unknown portion is what I need to replace up top. So that's the plan and uh, I've got to use what is available here for references uh, as far as the original sheet metal. So I may try and trace out the template before I call it a day. Alright, so uh, I was able to knock out the tracing of the cardboard real quick. It's a good place to end off. It's kind of neat that this diagonal brace was here because I was able to use some of my magnets to hold the cardboard nice and true. So what I'm going to do is uh, from about here all the way over to the center of the windshield I will trace out on some flat sheet and then I will cut that contour and make an attempt to put that channel back in for the window frame. All right, I'm going to call it a day before I get in trouble. See you again next time. All right, so I've got the windshield lip tacked in place, and you can see all of the menagerie stuff. I got clamped to it and pushing on it, and what I found was when I lined up the lip on the A post on the driver's side, as it came across the roof, it actually was like an inch and a half above where it should have landed on the center of the windshield. And what I discovered is that the cowl was pushed in at the bottom and it was raising that line up. And the top corner of the A post was laid back a little bit. So I had to use another bumper jack to push up this corner where the post transitions into the roof and uh, between the two I was able to get it to line up pretty well so I've gone in and I've tacked the roof line along the <laughs> whatever metal is left uh, in the roof itself and I'm gonna go in and grind it down and kinda dress it up just a tiny bit I have literally have to go in and build that radius along that transition from my new piece to the existing roof. I've got to build it with weld and actually create that fillet, if you will, um, because there's just no metal left in the roof. So I'm kind of playing foundry with my MIG welder. And, um, but the roof has really started to come into shape. Uh, that whole dented section that was all the way across the top of the windshield has really started to come back into place and the left and right side of the, the A posts are matching very very well and if you stand off to the side and you line it up the angle towards the back is good and when I initially put my new piece in I used my homemade angle finders here to 
check the angle of the passenger side versus the driver's side, and that's how I found out that it was a good quarter inch out. So this was something that worried me big time, and um, I think I'm really getting the cowl and that roof line back to where it needs to be. And it's got some structural integrity now. And uh, now that that's done, I can move on to other things. So I'm going to take all of my tools off of the windshield area and get in there with a hard wheel and grind down the welds that I've put in there. And then I'll go in and I'll stitch in between uh, the parts that are already done and try and uh, make a lady out of that. Um, without having to use, you know, when the time comes, there's going to be a lot of body filler in this thing. So, um, a lot of the cracks along the roof from the vibration of, uh, you know, those cracks have been in this thing for probably 50 years, even while it was racing, and those cracks starting to propagate out of all of the disconnected metal, and, um, I've got those stitched back up and uh, so that whole front edge of the top edge of the windshield is uh, nowhere near as flimsy as it was just a little while ago so I'm happy about it um, made me a little nervous at first especially when I saw the misalignment um, but we chased it around a little bit and I think we've got it in a good position all right, I guess I'm going to have to call that a success. With that front lip all strengthened up, I was able to get the curvature of the roof back in place. And uh, if you look along the roof line here, you can see the, the windshield channel is actually pretty nice. It's fairly accurate. The curvature of the roof is back where it belongs. I welded up all of these cracks that were propagating up into the roof um, obviously this car had problems with rust 50 years ago uh, they skim coated this with body filler and there's uh, all kinds of holes drilled in there where they uh, used the dent puller to pull it out the best they could so that's real thin and Swiss cheesy I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about fixing that I'm really really happy with the way that this whole corner came out and um, I like the um, the roof line at the A post relative to the B post is almost identical from front to back. Measurements are all decent, so that was a major reconstructive process, and I'm very, very happy with it, and uh, I discovered a couple of other issues, as I mentioned, um, with this cowl being, uh, and this transition from the cowl to the A-post was out of shape, and the uh, A-posts were laid back at a different angle, so that's resolved and uh, little by little we're getting it a little more like a 37 Chevy is supposed to look so again it's only a stock car body I understand it doesn't have to be perfect 
But um, when it's all said and done, I'd like it to look reasonably good. Again, just to honor the folks that built this car originally. Next time on KEI Fabrication. So just out of curiosity, I wanted to put the front end in this thing.